Hello, folks. Brandon Chapman with you. This is the Monday, December 2nd Theo Trade video. And this is your final warning for 2024. And I say that from the perspective of booking profits rather than necessarily speculating on the downside risk. We're going to walk through uh, some volatility based indicators that suggest that this may be the exact moment to look to book profits for 2024. Look to right out the end of the year, maybe less allocated to the market than you probably are right now. And I'll give you an idea on how to take some of those highly volatile stocks that you may have some gains in and roll those into an option trade that will limit risk and still provide some semblance of opportunity in the broader market. So if we look at the S and P 500, yes, we're higher today. We're higher in nine of the last 10 sessions. You know, that is significant in and of itself, right? The market's made a huge, huge rally. Uh, I guess it's made a huge, you know, it's made a daily rally uh, and overall, you know, making a decent amount of movement. If I come down here to this, to draw a line, you can see from low to high, and I'm about to bring this down here. But if we go from low to high, we're up about three and a half percent. This has been a phenomenal year. We've had two back to back years of significant gains. We had a pretty significant rally off our lows. And the thing about this is, is how long you're going to bet this is going to continue. Some may say, well, yeah, Trump's in office. Yeah, but he's got to get policies through and it's a function of whether those policies yield what you think they're going to yield in terms of market performance. Uh, certainly there's risks of the dollar strengthening and other things that may help upend this apple cart. But right now the market's doing exactly what the institutions expect. Well, what do you mean the institutions expect? Well, let's look at skew. This is a volatility based indicator. And as it rises, institutions are doing what they're hedging their portfolios. How are they doing it? They're doing it by trading SPX options, specifically buying puts and selling calls. If we look at it right now, look at how the line has increased over the last couple of weeks off of our low down here at 140, all the way up to 167. Do you know there's only been maybe, you know, maybe two or three instances ever where the SKU index has been higher? Essentially, what, what we're saying right now is that the downside risk to the market has only been greater a handful of times since the 1987 crash. Do you find that interesting? That institutions are more hedged right now than almost at any point in history, given only a couple of other times in the last year. Now you can say, yeah, but you, they were hedged, but the market didn't go down. I understand that. But eventually the upside and what the, the risk reward of the market is going to flip. And, and, and right now it's signaling that that has flipped. And then we've seen it flip a couple of times over the course of the last year. So skew being high basically says, look, I mean, institutions have never been more hedged, maybe only a couple of points higher in history. The downside risks are, are preeminent. However, guess what? Higher skew also tells you you're going to have a higher frequency of small updates. Well, let's take a look at the S&P 500. Is that playing out? Yes. Right? Is it playing it out to the upside? I'll stick with SPX. Is it playing it out to the upside? Well, let's take a look. So I'm going to go back to a candle trend chart in the ATR. So if I go to studies and edit studies and I bring in the ATR study, this looks at the range between high and low or from the previous day's close to the next day's higher low, whichever is greater. We're talking about the range, the daily range. Well, let's take a look. You know, the average range currently is 51. That's down from over 60 on November 21st. Well, look at this. How many times have we exceeded 50 to 60 points on the range? Let's look right here. Uh, so today's range is 18 points. Well below the average true range of the last 14 days, 14 trading days of 52. Yesterday, 40 points. Okay, that's well under the 54 ATR that it posted on that day. Uh, the day before that, that's on the 27th. The range is 35. Well below the, uh, uh, the ATR, 55 points on that given day. $33 range against 56. Uh, we've got 56 against 57.8. Okay, one day here where we were close to the average true range over the prior 14 days. The 28 and a half points against 57.9. Here we have 76 points. One day that's now outside. So out of how many? One, two, three, seven days, we've only had one that's exceeded the average true range. And that's after we had the selling, right? Right here we had what? 60 points were above the average range. We were 68 above the average range. So right here is we got the sell off. We got some initial volatility, 
But as the skew has gone up over the last two weeks, the market's movement on a day-to-day -day basis has continued to shrink as the ATR is just falling off the map. So what's happening to volatility? Realized volatility is going down significantly. We're inching higher right now, eking out smallish gains as we're trying hard and trying hard. And look at today. The SPY was up 0.18%. XLK was up 0.95%. XLY, XLC, everything else was negative. We're not seeing broad participation. And we're finally starting to see a little bit of a break, the biggest since November 7th in XLF. So what does this mean? We're starting to see the market fracture a little bit. Okay, does it mean we're going to go down 5 to 10% tomorrow? Is it guaranteed? No. However, let's look at the VIX. The VIX right now has been dropping. Today, we were down. We're down 1.26% to 13.34%. Now, again, we're back to historic lows right now, going back to May, June, July of this year. Let's take a look at it from a different perspective. In this case, we're going to look at the three-month VIX, VIX3M. What is this telling us? Well, volatility is holding up at 16.3. Don talked about it this morning uh, during his uh, monthly coaching session for our annual subscribers at TheoTrade, talking about how the term structure is steepening. What does that mean? It means that longer term volatility, we're talking three months compared to one month volatility is getting extreme. In the futures markets called contango, for example. In this case, I'm going to bring up a ratio of the two. And we're seeing right now today's value. If you look over here, 1.22, what does that tell you? The three month VIX is 22% higher than the spot VIX. That's only happened above 1.2, two times this year. End of September and uh, middle of August. We hit it intraday back here in June. We didn't close there. Before that, we saw it in December. Has this always resulted in large declines? Well, guess what? We can look at the market, right? We can look back and say, okay, did we get a sell-off uh, following that signal in June? Intraday, getting, we got a little push, and then we did see close to a 10% decline. If we go back intraday in March, we did go above 1.2, not on a closing basis, but on an intraday basis, did we get some movement out of the market? The answer is yes. From peak to trough, we're down about 6.5%. Okay, great. Did we get one recently in here? Yes, we did. Did we get the big move? No, we started to, and then there was an election. And yes, we've gotten the Trump bump. Okay, we've gotten the Trump bump. Now what? We're going into last week was one of the worst weeks in terms of economic data. We're seeing the Fed maybe pushing off some of the rate cut hopes a little bit here. What is underpinning the market right now? What fundamentally is driving prices? Is it great earnings? Last week, last the last quarter was decent. It was okay. We're still looking at under 10% earnings growth and still resting on the power of the Magnificent Seven whose earnings are tempering. Microsoft today, for example, right? We did see some rotation. Microsoft was up a bit. Okay, we saw a nice little surge today in Microsoft. Okay, do we get further participation to the upside? We've seen that for the most part, it's lagged over the last nine months. Is it going to be NVIDIA that drives us to into the close, into the highs this year? NVIDIA has been flat on its back for the last little over a month. Is it the hope of cryptocurrency? Well, guess what? Cryptocurrency is not going to drive the market. But for some reason, you look on Twitter, everyone's talking about, oh, this is the season to buy crypto. Why? What is about this time of year that makes cryptocurrency such a special uh, event? The reality is right now that the market is pricing in what? When I say the market, we're talking about institutions that are trading significant amounts of options on the S&P and the periphery that surrounds the VIX and the volatility indices. We're seeing a significant amount of hedging going on right now. And again, going back to the three-month VIX, divided by the one month VIX, this yellow line, it's suggesting that right now, this is the highest since December of last year in terms of volatility expectations in the coming weeks. Mm -hmm. Essentially what the market is saying and the pricing of these options and who's driving the pricing of these options, institutions, they're suggesting that volatility expectations are the highest we've seen the entirety of 2024. 
So what do we have? We combine the fact that, look, the skew is saying, look, they've never been hedged maybe a couple of times ever. It's all been this year. The market's expectations for future volatility have never been higher this year. is the highest this year and compar comparable that we saw at the end of 2023. We don't get much higher than this. We have in the past a little bit. We've had times where we've hit excess in 2021 as an example. But normally, we don't achieve these peaks very frequently. And when you do, you got to take notice. So the question is not a matter of, do you short the market, punk? <laughs> no, right? This is not a, uh, a dirty, hairy moment, right? We're not saying, do you feel lucky, punk, and short the market? What we're suggesting is what? The idea is taking profits. When do you plan on doing it? Are you going to have diamond hands into the riding into the beginning of 2025? Are you going to be holding all the way into early 2025 and then seeing what the market gives you? Or do you say, look, I'm going to take it while it's hot. I'm going to grab it while I can and take those profits off. What I'll share with you is a little statistic, for example. The S&P, the biggest drawdown this year was a little over 8%. The biggest drawdown in the S, sorry, in the NASDAQ was 13%. Guess what the average drawdown in the NASDAQ was? It was over 40%. So the problem is most people are in a lot of meme stocks. Let's bring a Palantir here, right? If you're one that's out there riding the memes, you've done great this year. Hopefully you didn't buy here. Hopefully you bought back here, maybe here, okay? But do you realize Palantir to be down 30% in a day would be easy for it to achieve? Not likely, but easy. What do you do? Do you take profits here? Or do you just wake up tomorrow to 50? Is it likely? No, but it's a possibility. And so we got to establish what's the reward versus the downside risk. We're seeing that flip, at least from the perspective of institutions that are trading the market right now. And they're hedging and they're forecasting significant rise here in the near term. We're talking over the next month, riding into the end of the year. We've seen these circumstances in the past. 2018 is a great example. So what are you going to do? Do you feel lucky? Do you feel lucky that the market's not going to go here before it goes there? Do you feel lucky the market's not going to go to 20 before it goes to 100? This is what we're trying to establish. And right now, the risk reward does not favor holding a lot of this stuff long. As an equity, stop losses are not going to protect you in a fast market. If the NASDAQ goes 13, Palantir's likely one of the stocks to go down 40, 50, 60% again. Have we seen that in the past? We'll go back to here, for example, 29 to 21. Okay, 30% decline over what, two weeks? Part of encompassed in earnings. And that was relatively modest. What happens if you see some real selling? What can you do? Well, what, what if you chained or traded in your stock and bought some options? What I'm talking about here is the fact that Palantir has a real favorable structure to its options. The option volatility in the call side is rising as you move out of the money. You could sell your stock and you could buy, let's say, for example, a 6750, 7250. Okay, we'll go one month, two strike vertical. $5 wide here, right? A buck 78. That's your total risk in this case. So if you have 100 shares, sell your 100 shares, buy this for 178. Take a little bit of your profits. What's the upside here? $5 minus a buck 78. That's $3 and what? 22 cents. And you don't need to get $23.22 before you do something. The market rolls above 70, 72.50, 75. Just sell this and buy another strike higher. You can keep moving this. It's called rolling. Go from a 6750, 7250, and then roll it to a 7580 and an 8085 as the market keeps going higher and you book profits all along the way. Maybe you don't get 100% of the movement. Maybe you only get 30%. But to remove the downside risk in a stock like Palantir and still have potentially have 30% of whatever upside it has remaining for little risk and you roll it once or twice and you risk out. Maybe you take some profits and you have no risk at all except for gains. This is the way to manage the market right now. It's by using options to your advantage, vertical spreads like I just showed you of skew, or when you have skew going the other way, where volatility is falling as you move out in the money on the call side, 
you can look at something like a call ratio back spread. Your typical S&P 100 stocks, you might be able to employ those. But what this is saying is this is not the time to be brave. It's not the time to be hodl or diamond hands. You don't have to take on this level of risk. Again, it's kind of like Cameron, right? <laughs> in uh, in uh, um, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Ferris Bueller's saying, look, you don't need the heat. He's saying, I need to take it. This is not This is not a Cameron situation. You don't have a Ferrari that just went through the window and crashed. We're talking about this beforehand. We're talking about this as we're looking at the speedometer and wallet wanting to roll it back. You have a chance right now to take the heat on the speedometer off. You have a chance to book profits and you have a chance to, to be able to ride this more, more measured response if it's bullish into the end of the year. And if we start to see some bigger selling that the market's forecasting right now, you're prepared for that kind of selling and you can start to hedge it. In fact, you can start to hedge it right now. Anyway, that's our video for today.